For my master's thesis. Okay. So. Where you go to school? At the uh, University of North Texas. Ah. We saw that on the way in. Isn't that the? It's up in Denton. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that from the movie? Like uh, unnecessary roughness. I don't know. Is it? I'm sure it is. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Just came down here last year from Minnesota. Yeah. So <laughs> That's where I was living. That's a strange town. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we were there on, a, on Sunday in the business district, so it was pretty much probably like that new movie 28 did. <laughs> nobody on the no, streets, no, just no. us, you know. Are you James Cameron? Constant picture taken out there of the same things. Yeah. Get the picture of the window. Now let's go over the X. Oh, yeah, I wonder how many pictures <laughs> of that window and how many pictures of that X have been taken. <laughs> uh, more than you or I would probably like to think about. That should be your band promo on the <laughs> We did it. No. <laughs> I was only negative 16, something like that when it happened. Okay, if I get you to state your name, where you're from, what you do. Uh, my name is Eric Smith. I'm from Washington, D.C. And uh, deal burgers to little kids and play guitar in a rock and roll band. Where are you born? Washington, D.C. Most of your life. Uh, yeah, I moved to Pennsylvania for several years, but ended up back in Virginia. How did you start playing this band? Uh, I had a going away party, and I was uh, too drunk to drive, so he gave me a ride home and sort of stayed. Then we were bored, so we started a band. How long ago was that? Uh, about a year ago. What was the band again? The Catalyst. Yeah, man, yeah. Political beliefs? Any political beliefs? Yeah. Of course I do. Like, yeah. Yeah, in particular? Yeah, what do you believe? Um, I don't know, I wouldn't even know where to begin. What would you classify yourself as? Uh, it's uh, pretty left wing, I guess. Pretty left of center. Does that make it into your music? Or is that uh, sometimes, I don't, know. I don't like to be too preachy, I guess. Um, do you remember when you first heard about the Kennedy assassination? Years ago, like years and years ago. I'm sure it was in school. I'm sure it was talked about. And of course, all of our parents remember exactly where they were when they heard about it. You know, so I mean, it's it's really sort of more their thing than our thing. But uh, of course, the intrigue has been passed on through the generations. So your parents tell you the stories of the like Sure, I'm sure. I mean, they were both in school, and of course, got to go home. Uh, but. on tour with the band, and it's the only thing I could think of to do in Dallas that I knew of, except for try to find the, the cowboy cheerleaders, but I had no idea where to start. <laughs> um, so what do you think happened to the Kennedy shot? Uh, I think uh, uh, Oswald killed Kennedy with a magic bullet. 
somebody had to say it, I guess. Uh, well, just from being here today, like I've always sort of had opinions about it, but now I've actually seen it in person. Like, you know, I've, well, we didn't obviously didn't get to go to the sixth floor because we didn't have the ten bucks. Uh, but we walked over to the grassy knoll and we went and saw the X, and uh, just you know, I've, I've seen JF JFK like you know once, paid sort of paid attention to it. But I definitely remember the back and the le back into the left part, and from here that, that's not possible <laughs> from this building. But, I mean, he did get shot in the shoulder and fall forward, and then get shot in the head and fall backwards, and that's not possible from here. That's that was from two different directions. So you, have you like read anything else or seen anything else on it? Oh, I'm sure I've seen a bunch of stuff on like Discovery Channel and History Channel, you know, just the documentaries, or what have you. I've seen the Zapruder film, of course, a, a million times. Uh, usually like one frame every second, you know, brains flying out everywhere, stuff like that. Um, what do you think? Um, I mean, when you walked into the spot, it's surreal. It was surreal just like seeing, because uh, I mean, I've seen it on TV so many times, it's just like actually being here, like being able to like look around and have a like a 360 degree perspective on where everything is and where they said everything, like uh, all the individual like places uh, that have been mentioned, like uh, it, it's, it's a whole new perspective. Like it's, it's, it's sort of you get to decide for yourself, like because you've been, you know, you've been told your whole life what was supposed to have happened uh, but actually being here and being able to uh, look at your surroundings and knowing the facts just uh, it seems pretty obvious that there was somebody behind that fence on the grassy knoll and of course they could have gotten away pretty easily I mean what's back there a parking lot and some train tracks right and they weren't looking for him anyway so uh, what do you think uh, well, I'm sure it's going to be gen uh, the generations, for generations after this, people are going to be coming here just to, because uh, <clears throat> there's so much mystery surrounding the assassination that, of course, everyone's going to want to come and see it for themselves. And what else is there to do in Dallas, really, except find the cowboy cheerleaders? Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing I can think of. Okay. <laughs> oh, I appreciate your time. Uh, no problem. <laughs> Isn't any weeds on the couch? <laughs>